Hi, my name is Chuck Henderson, and welcome to the Walker House. This house was commissioned by my great-grandmother, Mrs. Clinton Walker, otherwise known as Della. She first wrote to Frank Lloyd Wright in 1945, the first drawings were in 1948, and the house was finished in 1952. I'd love to show you around, so shall we go on in? Come on. We are in the driveway and carport area. The house is made of Carmel stone, a soft locally quarried stone and has this very nice tan color. As you see, the stone is laid in in various different levels. So there's all this texture that's going on in here. Kind of like the old desert racery from Frank Lloyd Wright, other houses in Scottsdale and so on, but in a completely different kind of context. Now the roof is copper. It was originally designed to be copper, but when the house was being built in the early 1950s, copper was on restriction because of the Korean War. So Frank Lloyd Wright then designed a lovely roof with uh, triangular porcelain panels and different colors, and that was the original roof. Now Frank Lloyd Wright told us that it would never leak, but of course it leaked. So as soon as she could, Della took off the porcelain and replaced it with the copper. One of the great regrets of my life is that she didn't keep any of those amazing porcelain panels. They were really gorgeous. Now, in the early 50s, there was a movie filmed here called A Summer Place, starring Sandra Dee, amongst others. And if you watch that movie, you can see in color the original porcelain roof, and it was truly amazing. And I'd like to point out the red tile. It's very significant for a lot of the later Frank Lloyd Wright buildings. Now we are going to go through this rather inconspicuous door uh, on the right side and into the garden. So this is the loggia. You'll notice these big wood panels, mahogany panels, which come out from the windows. They're angled in a way that will allow the uh, people inside to see the ocean directly, yet still provide some privacy from the road above. The, uh, when the house was built, all of the screening up here was not here. I should also mention that this house was lowered four feet uh, when it was first built. So it's even lower from the road uh, than uh, the original site was. Out here is the Tommy Church originally designed garden. Tommy Church was a very famous landscaper, uh, landscape designer in the West Coast, and some would say the father, father of modernism uh, landscaping. Della had known him since he was a child and so commissioned him to de design a simple landscape for out here. It consisted of these uh, pea gravel, this wooden obelisk, and a piece of jade. Very, very simple landscape. Della herself planted these cypress that eventually grew up to this size. That didn't prevent Frank Lloyd Wright from being very upset at Della having hired Tommy. He considered landscape architects as professional vermin whose sole objective was stick up a bunch of shrubbery in front of a house, and certainly not his cabin on the rocks. Now much of the landscape from Tommy Church still remains, but the landscape has changed as these trees have grown up. So we've added a bit this island and uh, a few other features such as uh, Sprite over here. And these clamshells that were just lying around for 60 years are now together on a boulder over there. A bit of an Asian influence, which I think is very appropriate with, uh, with Frank Lloyd Wright. This is the ship's prow one of the defining architectural features of the house. As you can see, it is built very much like the prow of a ship facing out towards the ocean. The bottom of the wall slopes up and out at an angle till a couple of feet before the top where it turns, comes back in, and then on the top it slopes back. So all kinds of angles going on here. And as you would expect, this wall does get its share of wave action against it. So over time, it eventually did wear down. The Carmel stone is 
soft. And so around 2018, we had to replace the wall in its entirety because not only had the Carmel stone worn away, but water had gotten inside the concrete and weakened the concrete inside. So that was quite a project. It was built up from the ground up, so quite a project a few years ago. You can also see here this green that's on the uh, surface here, the spatina. It actually comes from the copper roof draining water uh, over the top of it. So here we have the National Historic Register plaque and the front door. Like so many of Frank Lloyd Wright's houses, the front door is hidden. You have to explore a little bit in order to come uh, and find the, the front door. In our case, the door is quite unique in that it meets in the center at this angle. Both sides open, and let's use one of them to go on inside. Welcome to the interior of the Walker House. As with so many Frank Lloyd Wright houses, you experience compression and then release as you come into the house. When you first enter the building, there are these narrow, uh, tight walls, low ceiling, giving you a sense of compression. Then as you proceed further into the house, the house opens up and reveals itself to you, releases. But before we do that, let me share you the story about how Della came to hire Frank Lloyd Wright. She acquired this lot from her sister. And her sister put a condition on it saying that she, Della, had to hire a well-known architect to design a building for the site. While casting about to figure out which architect to hire, she talked to my grandmother, her daughter, Harriet, who suggested Frank Lloyd Wright, saying that if he could do that for a stream, meaning falling water, Imagine what he could do with an ocean. That hooked Della, who then wrote this very poignant letter to Frank Lloyd Wright. Dear sir, I own a rocky point of land in Carmel, California, extending into the Pacific Ocean. The surface is flat and it is located at the end of a white sand beach. I'm a woman living alone. I wish protection from the wind and privacy from the road and a house as enduring as the rocks, but as transparent and as charming as the waves and as delicate as the seashore. You are the only man who can do this. Will you help me? To which Frank Lloyd Wright replied, you apparently have a picturesque site. We have two other projects going on in the area and a third might be convenient. Sincerely, Frank Lloyd Wright. Thanks, Frank. Now, let's take a step inside and let the house reveal itself to you. What a great reveal. What a great room. This house unveils itself to you and the whole surrounding in such a astounding way. This 270 degree view of the ocean outside with all of its attending waves and wildlife, the dolphins, the otters, the sounds of the waves crashing against the rocks. It just transforms you into this oneness, shall we say, with the, with the ocean around. And that was really Frank Lloyd Wright's intent, to bring the outside in and the inside out and make it all seem like one common environment. So I'm gonna start up here with the roof. The roof is held up by these very thin posts, there's four of them, around the outside of the living room. They connect with a steel beam that circles the living room and ties into the masonry of the fireplace here. All the wood in the house is red cedar, and what you're seeing in here is called combed plywood. It was not uncommon to be used in mid-century modern buildings in the early 50s, and here it's all untreated. But the ridges in the plywood give it a great definition. And up here in the center, you see these ridges going in all kinds of different directions, radiating off a point at the end of the fireplace here. But the effect is that it's all in motion. There's all this motion going on, much like 
the ocean outside. Around the, the next level here is like a border, much like the beach that separates the ocean then from the land. And then, then just outside the windows, it goes straight out, drawing your eyes out into the ocean and the beach beyond. In fact, these windows do the same thing. They step up and they step out, drawing your eyes out. Again, bringing the outside in and the inside out. Also, because they're slanted down, they help reduce the glare. The corners are mitered glass to glass, another very common Frank Lloyd Wright Usonian feature. But what it does in this room is it makes the whole window element seem as one, like there really isn't an edge anywhere. So it's one big view consistent from side to side to side. The venting, the way the air comes in the house, is all at the bottom of these uh, windows. They're sliders that go, that open up. There's no double hung windows or, or angled windows opening. The only way you get airflow is through those uh, vents underneath. You can see how the, uh, the stone angles in to this built-in uh, couch that runs all the way around the, the room. The original fabric uh, is not this. This was a, la a later ad. It's called Imperial Crystals, originally designed for the Imperial Hotel in, in Japan. These two triangular tables were original to the house. These later ones were added on. The floor is all concrete slab with integral color, Cherokee red, and there's radiant floor heating throughout the house. Now that's really nice because you come in in the morning and the floor is nice and warm, your tootsies are nice and warm, have a cup of coffee and watch the world awaken through these wonderful windows. The whole house is laid out on these four by four parallelograms that are uh, etched into the concrete. So the whole house is full of these 120 and 60 degree angles. There's only one right angle in the house, and that is in the master bathroom in the back. So you have all of these wonderful angles going on and triangular patterns uh, that you see throughout the house, including here with this big massive fireplace. You notice that the stone is coming up at a different angle, not horizontal like here, but coming up into the ceiling. Very dramatic. It is built for these uh, four foot pole logs that then light and, and the flame goes up this way. Again, very dramatic. Frank Lloyd Wright always viewed the hearth as the center of the family. People would gather around it, play music, play games, uh, um, read, what have you. And so all of his houses had uh, dramatic fireplaces, but this is one especially so. And when this thing gets going, you do need to sit back at, on the built-ins because it's quite hot. And yes, it does, uh, these, these poles do fall down, spread ashes and coals out here on the uh, on the floor and then you have to go and, and sweep them all uh, inside. This is a picture of Della soon after she moved into the house and she's sitting in this very spot right here. You can see she's got quite a collection of seashells and such behind her and she has these big glass balls. These balls are Japanese fishing balls. And at the time, these were used to hold up floats for nets in Japan. And they'd break loose from their nets and they'd come across the Pacific Ocean and land on beaches throughout the West Coast, including right around here. So Della had collected quite a number uh, over her time in Carmel before she came into this house. 
So she brought them in here. They're part of that original picture and they've been part of this house ever since it's been in existence. I'd like to also point out this table down here. This is a hexagonal table that was designed by Margaret Burton, one of the famous Burton sisters of the 10s and 20s. They were modernist artists, and one of their most famous installations was a large bass relief and the Pan American Exhibition in 1915. It fits right into this little niche here very perfectly, and the pieces come out just like this. So it's quite a unique little table, and it's a piece of art from another female artist like Della. Della was an artist as well, and she supported a lot of lady artists. Let's head into the kitchen. Welcome to the kitchen, or as Frank Lloyd Wright called it, the workspace. Very tight, very compact, and very original. If you look at pictures from the 19, early 1950s, you will see this exact same kitchen. These appliances all are original and they all still work. We cook in it uh, all the time when we are down here. There's a small refrigerator, old school oven, and a four burner range. You'll see many of these same uh, crockery and such um, uh, from the early uh, 50s right here. So amazingly intact and amazingly still useful. Now, in the original drawings, uh, Frank Lloyd Wright had a dishwasher right here and a sink here. Uh, my great-grandmother, Della, uh, she wanted a door to the outside um, because she wanted a place to bring uh, trash. Uh, Frank Lloyd Wright forbade the door and said she could bring the trash out the front door. Della was having none of that, and being a very strong-willed woman, uh, she and Frank had a number of clashes, um, uh, insisted upon the door. Frank Lloyd Wright said that uh, a door in this space right here would make the cabin on the rocks look like a hen where a seagull should be. He said, anyone could do this, you don't need me. Well, because Della was here and she was paying the bills, somehow, the door arrived. So now Frank was quite aghast at the thought of garbage cans sitting outside his wonderful creation for all on the beach to see. And so a negotiated solution was uh, arrived at and we shall go outside and check it out. So the solution to the dilemma was to sink the trash can into the ground so it couldn't be seen from the beach. And to this day, the trash guys still come and pick this out and uh, dump the trash into their bin and head out. So we're very lucky that they continue to do that and we give them a nice Christmas present. So that is the answer to that little dilemma. So let's go in and head down the hallway, shall we? Now Frank Lloyd Wright spent a lot of time on ships, so he certainly had a familiarity with these sorts of architecture. So a very narrow hallway with state rooms off to the side here. Um, so let's wander down this hallway and see what we find. One of the first things we want to point out is this little uh, um, hidden door here, which actually held the telephone uh, so that it could be reached from the bedrooms as well as from the kitchen and the living room. So it's the center spot for the telephone. Then we come to the first bedroom here, the first little stateroom, and it has a drawing of the house done by uh, Ling Po from one of the Taliesin architects. A common technique that Frank Lloyd Wright used uh, was to employ piano hinges uh, in, their in his doorways. And the advantage of these piano hinges are that uh, they're very slim. So it's not like some big uh, um, you know, hinge piece that hangs out. In fact, it kind of disappears right into, right into the corner. 
Uh, and the other nice thing about it is the, uh, uh, they're very, they're, they tie right in here. And so it, it allows for a, for a close fit when the, uh, when the cabinet or the door or the, or the uh, closet is closed. So this house has piano hinges in all of the cabinets, closets, the main doors, the front door, everywhere. And so these hinges just disappear. And that's a really neat uh, aspect of uh, uh, Frank Lloyd Wright's work. So we saw in the hallway how narrow the hallway was. And so it's interesting to see that uh, Frank employed this hardware uh, on the uh, hallway side of the, the door, which really kind of disappears or, or is really uh, a low profile. And on the other side, he's got, you know, one of these really uh, uh, old style, well, obviously 1950s um, uh, door hardware. Um, so more standard with the knob and, and what have you. So uh, he's made arrangements for that narrow hallway by providing uh, not a full, uh, um, handle on this side, but kind of an inter interesting and, and innovative solution. And next we have a common bathroom here with a, an extremely small shower, which was again nautical in theme, these small uh, little bathrooms. In the 50s, when Della was living here, ladies would go into town to get their hair washed and they didn't want to get the hair wet during the middle, during the rest of the week. So the shower uh, um, pipe actually comes out very low uh, in that shower. And so that caused me a number of problems as a, as a teenager, uh, trying to take showers in that little tiny uh, shower and scrunching down and trying to get everything washed off. So it was, uh, it was quite an adventure. So let's proceed a little bit further down the hallway, shall we? This is the guest bedroom in here. It's an ensuite with another very small uh, bathroom. And it's where my grandmother, Harriet, always liked to stay. This was her, her spot. Very nice uh, room with a, quite a number of built-ins. In many of Frank Lloyd Wright's, especially Usonian designs, uh, he had the furniture built in. And so this here, you can see uh, a variety of dresser drawers, all, uh, um, constructed into the wall, some shelving of various different types. Um, additional drawers down over here, and additional little cubbies. And this very cute little uh, corner desk, uh, very tight, very compact. Um, so uh, kind of utilitarian and very uh, uh, convenient to have it all built in and not taking up space with uh, bigger dressers. I'd like to point out uh, right up here, this is Della's mother. So my great, great grandmother, Elizabeth Brooks, done by E. Charlton Fortune, a famous artist from the teens and 20s and 30s here in Carmel. This one was done in 1929. This one up here is a deepscape painting done by Lucien Bloch. Lucien was a very close friend with Frida Kahlo and uh, Diego Rivera, and she worked on the Diego Rivera mural in Rockefeller Center, and was the last one to, he actually took a number of pictures of Lenin before Rockefeller made them uh, take that out. So uh, a number of very well-known uh, lady artists on the wall in here. An interesting uh, part of this hallway are these metal uh, beams that go up uh, and hold the, the roof up and, and such here. Uh, because they're made of metal, they're able to be very thin. And so there's more space for the windows and more space for the view out uh, onto the ocean. Also, from inside here, we can see the effect of those baffles from the uh, loggia that we showed you earlier. Uh, where they angle out so that you have a good view of the ocean, yet it still provides some protection or a blocking from the street. So this here 
is the is Della's bedroom, so the master bedroom, uh, original to the house. Uh, she had a single bed in here, uh, and the bathroom, closet, and so on. Uh, right here uh, was where the room ended, uh, and the window uh, uh, was right here, and you can still see some of the metal where the window was attached. So this was the outside of the house right here. Now, when uh, Della, um, right around 1960, 1959, uh, she got married at age 81 to Jim Van Lobenzels. And Jim Van Lobenzels was a good foot, foot and a half taller than she was. And he wasn't about to live in a single bed in this tiny little bedroom. So what uh, happened was uh, Della was a, an artist. She was a painter and uh, she had asked Frank Lloyd Wright soon after completing the house if he could design her an artist studio. And Della, uh, sorry, Frank uh, did so and sent her a sketch of uh, a studio. They took that uh, design and my uncle, her grandson, Sandy Walker, who is an architect, uh, completed all of the working drawings for that. And, uh, and that was the addition that made their master bedroom the size that it is now. So this is the expanded master bedroom now, uh, designed or, or uh, modeled after the artist studio that Frank Lloyd Wright had designed for Della. The window you see back over here was the original bedroom window that sat uh, in the space I showed earlier. And that vanity or this cabinet here uh, was also part of the original master bedroom's uh, furniture. Now, when this was built in 1960, we were all very lucky that the, uh, a lot of the original craftsmen that worked on the original house were still around. And so they were able to complete this in a, in a way uh, almost indistinguishable from the uh, original house. So many people come in here and they don't really uh, realize that this is actually an addition uh, onto the house. Now I uh, said that Della was an artist and she was a painter. And at the end over here, you can see a painting uh, that was by Della of uh, three kids, and I am the kid here in the red holding the sword. So it's kind of a, a nice connection back to Della and back to this generation and to my generation. I hope that my children and my children's children will be able to enjoy this house uh, as well. Also in this room, there is a framed illustration of a conceptual drawing of this house, um, a perspective rendering. And this drawing, as well as the one in the front bedroom, were uh, illustrated by uh, Ling Po, a rather famous Taliesin Fellow of Wright's time. Thank you for watching this tour of my great grandmother's house. I hope that has been informative for you and that you have learned a thing or two. And we hold the house open once a year for the Carmel Heritage Society. And I hope to see you at one of those tours in the future.